had you along. Hour number three tonight already, zooming along, as I told you. It's our Monday night program and our third hour with uh, Yoichi Shimatsu. And Yoichi and I get together with others. Richard Wilcox will join us in about a half an hour. And uh, sometimes Dana Dernford is with us. I have not been able to get in touch with Dana for a couple of weeks. I am concerned. Uh, so if anybody out there knows him, please have him uh, get in touch with me. I left a message, a couple of them, on his answer service, and I've written to him, but nothing comes back. He was on another expedition by himself in his 21-foot Zodiac, which is a rubber boat with a top on it, and he told me he was in, what the hell did he say, 18-foot seas to get into port so he could try to get on the program one night. He fought his way in. 18 foot. Uh, even if it was 14, it's too much. He shouldn't be out there. Uh, he's, uh, he's, he's on crutches. I mean, he's, anyway, I hope he's all right. Yochi, hello. Welcome back. Well, hello. And, uh, I think Dane is a survivor. He's intrepid. Great seamanship. I think, uh, he'll be fine. Yeah. And we, I'm, I'm uh, with you. His but, skills and yeah. his experience. And uh, certainly we trust his observations as a trained uh, oh, yeah. you know, diver. I mean, uh, as yeah. a professional diver, he knows his species there because he lived off that for many years. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think he's got a lot more in-water, underwater experience oh. than most marine biologists well, have. Well, probably. Far more. Uh, you know, exa- so. Oh, uh, he's a real <laughs> yeah, I mean, He's the real deal. A hundred of them combined, yeah. Probably. That's right. He, That's he's right. the real guy who knows the, un- yeah, the underwater world. Telling us uh, vast extinction events going on, and they're obviously working their way south. This is happening in, uh, up in Alaska, and given the kind of reports he's getting, and given the kind of reports that have been coming out of Alaska, you would expect uh, President Obama uh, and his great jobs advisor Jeffrey Immel, uh, oh, CEO please. of GE, which built the Fukushima reactors, to put on a defense of some sort, and it looks like the best they could do was a big fish story about the wolf fish that yeah. made the sort of circuit. Okay. Yeah. I saw the first version of it. Yeah. It was, you know, uh, Yahoo News has just become a posting site for paid stories. You know, all these dodgy little startup right. Uh, right. web news outfits that are trying to put Rents.com out of business, you know, uh, you know, IPT and uh, others, yeah. you know, post stories there. But what's unusual about this one, there was no byline and there was no story source, and it was based on a Twitter <laughs> post by a Japanese sport fisherman named, um, let's see, he's got a comment, Hirosaki, I think it's Hirosaki, he's got a complicated name, let me look it up here. Uh, Hirosaki, I think it's Hirosaki, what was his first name? Uh, oh, Hirosaka, Hiro, Hirosaka Hidoshio, a long name. Uh-huh. And he had Twitter, his uh, Twitter account is Hira Hiroro, H-I-R-A-H-I-R-O-R-O. So he's sort of an animal adventurist, not so much a sport fisherman, who goes around looking at gigantic animals. He didn't mm-hmm. go up and those and all that, but, uh, you know, took his pose and next to. Mm-hmm. So he sort of likes the sensation of large animals. But apparently... According to his claim, and this is only a Twitter claim, but it's not verifiable, uh, he caught this wolf fish. It's called the Okami. Okami's wolf in uh, Japanese. You might have known that there was an Okami series, sort of the uh, samurai service, the rogue samurai series. Mm. Okami, the guy with the little baby, you know, mm. pushing the baby carriage mm. around mm. Uh, that used to used to be around. So, and this is the bearing wolf fish. Uh, it's called the in uh, the Scientific name is Anarchicus orientalis, and uh, it's also known as a sea wolf, okay? Now, he says that the fish, the story was already the story because it said that the thing was caught not too far from Fukushima, but it's actually not caught in the Pacific. It was caught in the Sea of Okos, okay, on the Shiratoko Peninsula, which is inside the Sea of Okos. So it's more well, isn't in that, that is that by sea between northern Japan and Russia and purely yeah, well, that's by huh? Kem, that's by the Kamchatka Peninsula, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. South of Kamchatka Peninsula, the yeah. Kirli Island area, that enclosed area. Where the- oh no, 
Okay. Are you there? No, oh, nuts. See, just when we get on a roll. All right, we'll we'll get him back. We will call him back. There he is. He's back. Okay, this fish would have probably set a world record, according to sports fishermen. Okay? Mm-hmm. It probably would have set a world record. But uh, this fellow didn't do all the sort of things you need to do, the reporting. There are protocols. Like you got to, yeah, yeah exactly. Gotta, yeah. Yeah, and he claims to have thrown the fish back in. He had it on board <laughs> for the photos and threw it back in. Uh-huh. Which would not make a lot of sense. It's such an old fish. You would, you would take it to port and have the local port, you know, uh, official, the Fishermen's Association basically weigh it, you know, measure it, uh, and do all the things they do. So he would set a world record, but well, he didn't do right. that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And this species basically eats a lot of crabs and clams. You know, it's a bottom, bottom feeder. That's why uh-huh. that's a sharp piece. It, it uh-huh. sort of scoops up through the gravel. You know, gets whatever it can, worms and things, and spits out the gravel. So, yeah. now there was no byline on the English story, and that made me very curious because everyone else is out there promoting it, and we know it's a paid story. Someone paid to place that story at Yahoo, and then it turns out that since then, recently, there's been a denial of the Fukushima connection. This story said, "Oh, there's a Fukushima connection." Okay, and this is a radi- uh, radioactive mutant. Now, uh, the United comes out after a lot of other websites picked up the story. For example, ENE News picked up this story. Now, Motherboard in uh, England, which is part of Vice, the Vice Media, Vice TV system, they run a story saying, oh, the, this fisherman denies it's, an, uh, it's a um, mutant. Uh, the story is written by Emiko Josica, who is a writer for Motherboard Vice, okay? Yeah. Oxford graduate. Uh, she worked, you know, she, okay, you see the profile here? Are we starting to see the profile, British intelligence? Oh, you bet. Now, Vice TV, as you recall, you know, it, uh, sent Dennis Rodman famously to North Korea to Pyongyang, and uh, he was accompanied by Eric Schmidt of Google, the the head of president of Google at the time. Okay, the odd very couple. strange fellow, all yeah. kinds of things up his sleeve, all right? And that became the inspiration for the movie The Interview, which led to the near destruction of Sony Studios, right? Right. You see, you see, Sony Studios, Godzilla, near destruction of Sony Studios. You see that after they did the interview based on Vice. So again, here's a setup. Oh, let's do this thing of us uh, doing an interview with uh, Kim Jong Un. Let's make a script based on that. Let's sell it to Sony. And let's try to destroy Sony because we don't want another Godzilla talking about nuclear mutants. So uh, if you if you get on to this sort of line of thought here, what's actually going on uh, and why the interview uh, came up and they did try to knock out Sony, okay? So Vice Media, let's go back to his beginnings, was started by a Pakistani-Canadian. Already we've seen, uh, you know, blinking red lights here, Tarosh Alvey. He claims he's a journalist. But it turns out that his mother is the chair professor of Urdu studies at McGill University in in Montreal. Mm -hmm. Urdu studies at the time, we're talking about the invasion of, you know, that's that's the language of Pakistan, okay? We're talking about Urdu and Pashtun are the two major languages there. Mm -hmm. The invasion of Pakistan by U.S. forces after 9-11. Okay, the invasion and occupation of Pakistan. Are we not talking about that? Mm -hmm. And the mother, obviously, being the head of a a major department in Uyghur studies in Canada, was being Canadian soldiers were there very famously in the Afghan war, uh, would be deeply, deeply involved in translations for both MI6 and the CIA, right? These people are the sort of analysts. We call them analysts. They're the translators. Something like, so what's her name, Sybil? Uh, was for, you know, the Turkish. Uh, right. You know, the Turkish. Sybil, Sybil Edmonds, was it? Yep, Sybil, Sybil Edmonds. Uh, well, she, she was, was a, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. She was an agency. Yeah, she was yeah. an NSA agency translator. She was, a, you know, she was adept at Turkish language. Mm-hmm. And so very similar sort of role. So we're seeing this thing come out of McGill, which also is very well known for a psychiatrist there, I mean, uh, Ewan Cameron, who was a lead scientist in the MK Ultra, MK Delta, and Project Artichoke. These were the mind control LSD experiments using Kurari, all sorts of things, 
on patient subjects. You know, people they picked off, just the hundreds of people went through this and were cruelly treated. Uh, McGill very famously involved in that, and that's on the record. There's no, you know, this is not conspiracy theory, folks. This is, look it up. You know, Ewan Cameron, Dr. Ewan Cameron, one of the cruelest uh, psychiatrists the world has seen and a, a chief experimenter for NKL. But McGill has always had this very close connection with the intelligence communities of Britain and the United States, okay? Now, the most famous producer out of... Uh, Vice TV is Shane Smith. He managed to get a um, whopping huge deal for Rupert Murdoch, 20th Century Fox, who invested $70 million into Vice TV for only a 5% share. So this is a huge amount of money for a few shares. Hmm. And this deal was arranged by James Schwab, who is a hmm. lawyer, entertainment lawyer for Paul Weiss, Rifkin, Wharton, and Garrison. Hmm. Who, what is this? Law firm was one of the oldest Jewish-owned law firms, you know, in New York. They were the law firm where Adley Stevenson worked, and very close. They were lawyers for Eleanor Roosevelt, and also for the huh. Roosevelt Treasury. Well, guy named Hans Morgenthau. It's all this connected. Is the very heart of the Zionist establishment. Yep. Heart of the Zionist establishment in New York, Montreal. You know, you name it, right? Uh, this, uh, this. Law firm um, that that Schwab came out, Paul Weiss, Rifkin, Wharton, and Garrison. They do the pro bono work for the Iraqi Refugee Resettlement Project. Okay, now this is the big group that mm-hmm. gave us the Iraq War. You know the INA. Right? Uh, they, yeah, they're making money yeah. on both the ends. Government in exile. You know the Iraq War was to the benefit of which country in the Middle East. Yeah, to destroy the uh, the Arabic world's largest army. Okay? Right, right. So does it all make sense who these people are? Okay, so, by the way, one of the founders of this uh, law firm, goes back 1890, founded the Young Men's Hebrew Association, sort of the counter to the uh, YMCA, all right? Huh. So we basically are seeing here with this big fish story, uh, oh, yeah. The other thing is, after Murdoch puts in 70 million bucks into this thing, they, they still, this, uh, their lawyer Schwab still wants to raise more cash. Uh, so he puts on, at CEO, he appoints the CEO, Alyssa Maestra Monaco. This, this is difficult. Maestra Monaco. Alyssa Maestra Monaco, who is the, Assistant Chief of White House, uh, Chief of Staff for the Obama White House. In other words, the Obama White House, uh, Assistant Chief of Staff, you know, right below Axelrod. Sure. Uh, is appointed to head Vice TV. And she's the wife of David Crone, who is, uh, a Chief Aide for Harry Reid. Okay? Hmm. Head of the Senate. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. basically, this whole thing, by TV cell smells nothing like but a CIA intelligence operation. And it's all it could do for those millions of dollars it's raised from 20th Century Fox is cook up this big fish story, okay, to try to discredit every everyone else. So I, I, I would hope that people at ENE News, whoever else has posted this story and picked up this big lie, should uh, should go over this. We don't know anything about this big fish. If it wasn't just a dummy, it could have just been made out of rubber. We, you're right. Yeah? You're right. It could have been just a Hollywood... It just could have been a Hollywood prop. Yes? Exactly. So the whole thing is to discredit the critics of the Fukushima Tokyo Electric Power Company and the nuclear industry. This whole thing, vast amount of energy was done that. But it was done... In a very, they're not journalists. Yeah, I'm a journalist. First thing I look at is the is byline. You know, who wrote the story? Well, the name there. Who, Since what, where, when, why? By this guy or that guy? Exactly. 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 So we just track down the basics, and this is a big fish story, and we tra- trace it back a little further. It's coming out from deep inside the psychological warfare program of the CIA and MI6. McGill University, Ewan Cameron, MK Ultra, the whole, you know, the whole shebang. Okay, so this is what they're capable of, they're capable of doing. And meanwhile, as this big fish story is floated, what's his name? You know, Jeffrey 
I melt Fukushima. Right? I, I melt. melt. It's it's Fukushima, Im- it's right? melt, but it uh, should be I melt. And as far as we're yeah. concerned, it is I melt. I melt. Yeah, I melt it down Fukushima. Yeah. yeah. This man, wonderful. It's amazing he's still the head of General Electric. After well, it shows you how corrupt it all is. Or he'd be out. If there was any accountability, he'd been long gone. Yeah, Come on. Is, yeah exactly, exactly. Well, it's like this uh, crane collapse in Mecca, you know, yeah. 29 uh, pilgrims the, there. The Bin Laden Construction yeah. Company. Yeah, in Mecca. Yes. Yeah, do you think Bin Laden is fireable? No one can fire, you know, the Bin Ladens, right? No. So he's backed up by George Bush and Tony Blair. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can't fire the man. He's one of the boys, right? Right. He's one of the boys. Bin Laden's dad and brother are, you know, they're part of the club. They were living in America. At the time. You know, you know, see, remember last, uh, what was it, uh, two, two weeks ago, about a month ago now, Yochi, that plane crashed and yeah. broad daylight in England killed his mother. Uh, yeah. I Forgotten if anyone yeah. else in the family was killed, but uh, Osama bin Laden's mother died in well, a private yeah, jet yeah, well, crash. The pilot was one of the best in the world. Yeah, well, and, she's just she's just she's just one of the wise. She's just one of the wise. Uh, one of the many wise, dependable. Mm. <laughs> you know, they had to maybe uh, you know change some bank accounts around and all that. So, Who knows? You know, this is what happens with early. But anyway, back to Jeff Immelt. His current complaint against the Obama government that he so loyally served and so graciously benefited from without prosecution for his role in Fukushima for the destruction of the North Pacific and the destruction of the entire West Coast. Uh, he got away with all that, but he's complaining that the you know, U.S. Congress and Department of Congress, they shut down the import-export, the Export-Import Bank, which was basically a bank that gave credit for the export of U.S. goods. These were very large ticket items abroad. Right. And uh, and you shut down a bank like this because it's not needed. You know, the Federal Reserve has run this cheap money policy. Um, most major corporations have a finance arm like cheating finance. Anyone who, you know, bought anything from, well, you don't buy turbines and things like that, but um, those, you know, let's say GE has its own banking system in-house, you know, tons of billions of dollars of money. Sure. But it was basically getting a free subsidy from the U.S. government for its export of jet, uh, turbine jet engines abroad, okay? Uh. Now, Demo says, if you don't give me more credit, more subsidies, and continue this, I'm going to pull out the aircraft engine section of GE, and we're going to move it overseas. And one country, one of the two countries sided with the China, okay? And these are jet engines, of course, are dual-use jet engines, can be using jet fighters and bombers, sure, so sure. as well as civilian aircraft. Yep. So this goes to show, President Obama gave this guy a long leash, he gave him the benefit of the doubt, didn't demand that his head rolled for Fukushima and for the destruction on the West Coast. And what's the guy do? He bites the hand that feeds them. You know, is, is well, that's, this, that, that goes along yeah, with the arrogance. I don't know what to say about Total that. arrogance. Total. Yeah. And this man is President Obama's job czar. He's yeah, the man who's yeah. supposed to create He's jobs. Creating jobs right for away, Americans. And as, <laughs> first, as soon as they shut down the plant, uh, 500 jobs are moving out of the USA. Forever. Okay, this is a jobs box. This was a trade off. We let you off the hook on Fukushima if you create jobs in America. Yeah, so that was the deal. I don't know. You know, McDonald's, I think, has created a lot more jobs than GE has. Uh, that's all well, I have. Well, unfortunately, I of many, many of those jobs are taken by illegal aliens, so, but yes, correct. Well, yeah, yeah, I know, but it, it, you do create more jobs in the USA, you know? Yeah. Jeffrey ML is now reneged on the deal, pulling the jobs out. Great. I don't want to say anything about his patriotism or anything like that because it's big business, huh. global Please. corporate capitalism. But there yeah. was a deal on the ground. Mm-hmm. Okay? You don't go to jail for Fukushima if you create jobs in the U.S. And this is, he's saying, I'm pulling jobs out of the U.S., basically. I, I, you know, what, what can be done about these guys? You know, I mean, these are, these are, these are worse than criminals. You know, Al Capone never would have done anything like this. You know, Al Capone was a gentleman compared to Jeffrey and Mel. What can we say? 
You know, you you make a good point. Uh, even anyway. ga- even the gangsters used to yeah. have codes of behavior and, and yeah. ethics, and uh, you knew yeah. when you screwed up, uh, there was a price to pay, and and yeah. it was real simple. You pay the price. Yeah. These guys are walking scot free from the Fukushima disaster. From exactly. The yeah. Thing, yep. The West Coast. So the, the other thing, uh, Arnie Gunderson, we see he's more talkative, and uh, I think yeah, he's kind of com- he's, he's, he's actually showing. I don't know where I uh, mean, showing a lot more realism now. He's now I it too. Yeah, he's saying I don't know how much is dumb. You know, we don't see, we don't know what the upper limit you is. You know, you know why, it, so. Yochi? You know yeah. why Busler has changed yeah. his yeah. tune because the obvious facts of the yeah. catastrophe are going to be so undeniable, he's going to look like a horse's ass yeah. real fast. So he's trying to protect yes. himself. Yes, well, he already he already does, so he's trying to climb well, to the front of, of the horse, I guess. You know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, something's going to end up on his face. Yeah, That's right. right. That's right. So, yeah, but uh, uh, Gunderson was absolutely right about Typhoon et al., and... The news repeat, uh, media did not report, and it was not found out till like a week later, more than a week later, after our last discussion, that, in fact, the typhoon massively hit Fukushima. It was the worst flood in 50 years of Fukushima province. How can that be? District. How can that be? It, of, very strange coincidence. Yeah. Very strange. Hold on and, a minute. Uh, no, we're not going to. No, we'll go keep. That, let's keep going because I don't want to. Uh, there's a delay here. Keep going, Yochi. Go ahead. Yeah, the number of bags of radioactive waste, I think, some have been reported where, you know... Uh, I said 77, I think, there, something like that. Charge ...actually reported. But, yeah, yeah. But, in fact, yeah, I've been inside this zone plenty of times and up in the forest being chased by security guards and all that. There are tens of thousands of bags all over the landscape, maybe hundreds of thousands of bags all over, but many of them are still open, many of them because they're still, yeah, yeah, and there's no way that thousands of bags weren't washed away if this was the biggest storm in 50 years of Fukushima. There's just no way, because there's bags lying in very low-lying areas, in estuary areas, there's piles of bags, bags strewn all over fields where they're collecting up on the hills. You know, right up, right next to the edge of a cliff, you'll see yeah. bags. Yeah. You know, the the, the amount of radiation. I've seen from some photographs. Alone is huge. Yeah, I didn't know it was that bad. That yeah. that's even and my worse than I thought. Is that, yeah. Yeah. And my contention is that the the water from the Pacific Trench that swept across there in successive storms. There were some successive rainstorms also. Came in from Pacific Coast, and whenever you have that, you have radiation. Like, like about 2,000 meters, you know, about 6,000 feet. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's say well, 3,000 feet to 6,000 feet. You see in that in those clouds a lot of radiation. So that stuff is going to be washing into the watershed and eventually working its way downstream uh, into the urban populated areas. I think. Oh, drinking of water, water absolutely. Japan, all of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You bet. Yeah, you bet. In, in the drinking water for sure. Yeah, within yeah within days or weeks you'll be in the drinking water. Uh, within a month, let's say, uh, within a couple of months you'll be uh, flowing down into the cities and many and many you know, you know at, at sort of groundwater coming in. Yeah. You know, contaminated water under yeah. the ground, yeah. underground rivers and streams below the cities, where a lot of water is pumped up for various purposes, like you know, spraying sidewalks, showers. Correct. That's a, Basically, Let's, yeah. Let me hold on, y- Yoshi. Let me let me bring uh, Richard Wilcox is uh, standing by. He's in Tokyo right now, and oh, okay. what you're talking okay. about yeah. directly relates to him and affects him. Richard, are yeah. you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hello, guys. Hi, Rich. Good to welcome. Talk to you. Yeah, welcome back. This, Thank uh, you. And all hello, Yoichi. T- t- you heard what he was saying about all this. Hey there, Richard. The radioactive hey, water going into uh, into yeah. the groundwater under Tokyo right. being pumped up and all the rest of it. Is did the media cover this honestly at all? And they said seventy seven bags were were uh, somehow right. floated away by this flood. Uh, Yochi is saying right. it's thousands, thousands and thousands of bags. 
Well, when he and I visited uh, Fukushima that 2013 summer, we saw, yeah, untold numbers of bags piled up. And then recently there was a, I think it was RT, they flew a drone over some area, and there was, you know, gazillions of bags. Now, I say, oh, floated away i don't know about that i mean it does what they did report you saw disparate reports like they'd say 394 bags and then i saw another one that was 800 bags and so they whatever the truth is they sure don't have their story right and um as usual you know you just get disparate information that's not it's without a context and not it's very vague on the details, so you're just left guessing. But um, we did that storm was that typhoon was uh, huge, and it lasted for like four or five days, and um, it so there was a lot of water coming down on us. Which normally the big typhoons don't directly hit the Tokyo region, mm-hmm. uh, but this year it was different. They did, and uh, um, and that was just uh, obviously that would have an Im- impact on how the water flows and uh, even up as far as Fukushima it didn't hit directly but obviously they got hit pretty hard too so some of the, the, the mainly yeah, some of the ahead. wind yeah. the wind was blowing at nearly 160 miles an hour in gusts at times mm-hmm. this was a big deal yeah yeah well in in Tokyo the wind wasn't that bad but it was just endless rain but yeah i mean depending on the region that you're in in yeah. Tochigi and uh some of those other outlying areas they got really there was massive uh flooding and people's houses were swept away and high winds and so on as you say so um but yeah there's so many topics going on at the same time i'm i'm kind of blown away by the, the amount of news about fukushima but about everything but well you know and the um, amount of news story is interesting yeah, the amount the of news <laughs> i'm sorry rich the amount of no, news no. is uh there is none in these formerly united states in the mainstream media there is none about this situation yeah. there is no word about the u.s west coast being continuously exposed to Fukushima radioactive releases. It's ongoing 27 hours a day. It's not going to stop ever. Not in our lifetimes, not in for centuries. And that's just... Uh, no one talks yeah. about it here. Yoshi, nobody says anything here. You never see it. Um, yeah, we yeah Yoshi, what do you think? About 39 walruses, you know... Well, it, it, yeah, yeah, 39 walruses in Alaska that were found decapitated, but the pups were not decapitated. Basically, if an animal is dead on the beach, you're allowed to take its, uh, its bones and its very precious ivory. You know, they have these two huge, uh, fangs, these two huge tusks. Tusks. So, presumably, yeah, these things weren't hunted because there were, there were pups there whole and all that. They obviously had died. Then some scavengers, you know, beachcombers would come along took their uh-huh. head to take the tusks and the skulls, which are worth something. Oh, so, they're worth more uh, now because no, they glow in the dark. No, there's no, let's say, place for autopsies. There was no place to do autopsies there. This is a very isolated area of Alaska, but the wa- it looks like the walrus still off is beginning. You know, uh, you know, thousands of them, tens of thousands have converged on these islands because there's no more sea ice left. And, uh, it's, it, and we've talked about this sort of death, the festival of death or something. It seems to, you know, they seem to be congregating to be together before this kill off again. So this, this, this is a 39 found on shore. Uh, and the adults had their heads cut off, but the pups were found whole. So this could be a sign. We're going to have to keep watch, watch on that. Well, walruses with the tusks eat clams, don't they? That's what they use the tusks for. They dig up clams. I think, yeah, they crack them, I think, yeah. 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 They're not easy to crack, yeah. yeah. Something right? like they that. Dig them, they dig them out with the tusks. So the point is... And they're not like otters. They don't have them. They're bottom yeah. feeders uh, indirectly because they're, they're eating yeah. off the bottom. Right. Rich, what's uh, what's right. going on I in the... Have baloney, like that. Yeah, what's going on over there uh, now yeah. in the media? Japan is dying right. slowly but surely... Health is breaking down. Are you beginning to see stories about, I, I suppose they're being scrubbed, spiked, and spindled. They're not making any news over there, but you got to have sick people there, lots of them. 
Uh, well, I mean, if you walk down the street, you can't really notice people dying of radiation. I'm not. I'm not suggesting that. But, but yeah. <laughs> But I mean, yeah, um, it's not like a uh, George Romero movie yet, <laughs> Life of the Living Dead, but uh, right. Night of the Living Dead. But that's well, it's been a long time since I saw that one. But no, I mean, you got Ian Farley's uh, estimate of, uh, and he's very conservative, I think, of the British scientist saying 5,000 people will die of cancer from Fukushima, and he's talking mainly about the vicinity. And if we go back in time at the uh, when it happened and he had uh, Chris Busby making estimates and mm-hmm. I think his was like 300,000 people will and these are over different periods of time and it's com- complicated on where your location is in the time period and your age at the time you're exposed and so on but right. and then I think even Arnie Gunderson said like a million people are going to die from cancer so I mean it's hard to, as you say, the the media is not methodically uh, uh, reporting on these things from a point of view of we want to find out what's happening. If they, and it's easy to cover up with uh, sicknesses by blaming it on some other cause. But, but I did see that you know uh, a huge number of people in Japan are now over eighty years old. So I mean, it is dying in the sense that the uh, it's too difficult to raise a family here and I don't think Fukushima did the country any good especially in that region people had to flee their their families were torn apart um, so at the very least uh, that this kind of a destructive trend that uh, doesn't help the country at all as far as huh. you know finding stability and right and you know, the question the solution I plus demographic yeah the question I have yeah. is uh Yoshi, and, and I want to get your read on this. How much longer can these wrecked buildings, these structures, yeah. stand up? I mean, you've got right. three spent fuel, fuel pools ready to fall yeah. to the ground, basically. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, well you what you talk about, about is water there's damage 10, is, uh, 10 seaverts of yeah. radiation per hour at those buildings, so they're very radioactive. Anyway, yeah, go ahead, Yoichi. Yeah, the, the thing is, you saw that, you know, I don't know, did you see the photos of Fukushima flooded? You know, it was like a, it looked like a bath pools of water on the surface of the plant. So I'm just wondering the rate of flow and how that water is released, what that will do to destabilize. The water looks very brown, so there's a lot of soil mixed in. So the soil is being washed off along, you know, and that's uh-huh. why the radiation levels are so high. So that's what, uh, I don't know if you know, it's Richard, the, 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 the uh, runoff from this storm, you know, how that has been going. You, there's a lot of canals and rivers in Tokyo where you can see right. the runoff. Well, I, I did know, take some readings, what, what but that I, I didn't find any. Like in the last week. Yeah, right, right. Uh, I did, I mean, uh, the OET and I email sometimes and talk about these things, but uh, in case the NSA wants to know. <laughs> but, yeah, I took my dosometer down, and I always check out my window and everything. And it, where I'm at, it's, I, I checked at the gutter, too, and it was not specifically high. So, uh, But I think there are, you would have to do more of a widespread re- research project to find uh, where the effects are. But in the center of Tokyo, the radiation yeah, yeah. didn't really well, go well, from what it normally is. Yeah, my point is, we'll know when the water evaporates if there has been an increase as a result of the storms. Right. It's just that where I live up in the mountains, we can feel it immediately. As soon as the cloud comes in, you just see the spike in radiation. You can actually see the spiking upward. But Tokyo is, you know, like I, the, it's, it's basically I, landfill. I did, so you're very, very I did, far did down that before the effect spike. of that, you know. I did detect a small spike this morning, and it went back down. So there might be little spikes now and then from that. Yes. Okay, hold on, guys. We have to take a break. Just a minute. We'll come right back. Okay, let's get right back to our conversation Uh with Yoichi Shimatsu and Dr. Richard Wilcox, who is in Tokyo. Yoichi is in uh, Thailand. Now, story last week, 
Now, I want you to listen to this. There's not very much here, but you have to understand. The World Wildlife Foundation, WWF, is looked to for leadership, for wisdom, for guidance, and all the rest of it. They're liars. It's all controlled and all set up and all fabricated by the moneyed crowd, the big international corporatocracy that runs everything. Here's the headline. Tuna and mackerel populations in the northern Pacific suffer catastrophic 74% decline. This is the latest research. 75% of the tuna and mackerel are gone. This is admitted. Now, the World Wildlife Foundation says, quote, we risk losing species critical to human food security unless action is taken to halt overfishing and other threats to marine life. Now, did you hear the word radiation in there anywhere? Did you hear anything about the breakdown of the food chain from the bottom up? Nothing. It's it's really sickening. Here's the first uh, two paragraphs short. Tuna and macro populations have suffered a catastrophic decline of nearly 75%. Uh, the World Wildlife Fund and the Zoological Society of London found that numbers of uh, that particular family of fish, which also includes Bonito, fell by 74% between 1970 and 2012. They don't say where in that period of time uh, the major drop-off occurred. Well, I'm going to tell you it occurred in the last three, four, almost five years now. Uh, this is a recent thing. This is, uh, this is again a cover-up. There's no mention anywhere in the story that I can find that says that radiation might be a problem. Uh, Yoshi? Yeah, I'd like to hear how, uh, from Richard, uh, how, uh, the Japanese press picked up this report. It seems to put the blame on Japan for killing or eating, uh, the fish, you know, sushi and sashimi and so on. But my understanding is if you take on all the fish stocks, these giant fish farms off Mexico, off Australia, New Zealand, we probably have a net increase in the tuna population. In South Pacific too, they're raising, they're raising fish. So they're talking about fish caught in the wild. Yeah, there was a drop there, but we do know the whale population has radically increased since the 19th century and has been continuing to increase in the North Pacific. You know, that, uh, you know, huge species are no longer endangered. So, you know, it's not really clear uh, what they're talking about. Macro, they seem to be no shortage of macro in the world. You know, so I don't know how they gather their statistics. There are fishing bans and limits, of course, and the U.S. Has been, and Europe have been heavily yet. But I don't think Japan, the, 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 the Pacific side, has not been very much affected. The, the fishing bans are more for inshore fishing closer to shore, but not for uh, deep sea. So I don't know how, how it's playing out in Japan. Yeah, there's so many uh, angles to this. For, first of all, WWF stands for World Wildlife Fraud, Jeff. So yeah. that's correction. Yeah. Yeah. And I wrote a paper yeah. in 2002, exactly. I remember, critiquing them, critiquing WWF for, yeah, as you said exactly, they're just a part of the corporatocracy and um They'll they'll save uh, 50 acres of rainforest and then uh, make a deal with a logging company to cut down the rest of it. You know that's kind of how they work. They yeah, um, exactly. they're out there spreading the good word, and it's all uh, putting a, a nice face on the uh, industrial uh, unsustainable industrial practices and um, raising money and so on. But and then they blame everything on climate change or on. Uh, various things. And it's outrageous, as you say, that they don't mention, at least mention radiation as a possible factor. I mean, that would, in science, you have to mention all of the uh, relevant factors before you draw a conclusion. But, but what Yoichi said also is interesting because that's an old story, too, because we've been hearing about this for years, that uh, the tuna population, especially the Pacific uh, bluefin tuna, I think it is. Correct. Uh yeah, is, you know, uh, only 98, is there, there's only 2% left of That's the original. It. That's uh, right. 
Which I think is true. I mean, um, but I've always wondered how it could hold on for so long. And then, but I think your theory, Jeff, is with the facts that we have is is uh, uh, valid. That uh, if there is this big drop off, even in that small amount of fish remaining, that radiation could have been the factor. But I know what Yoichi is talking about too is that Japan gets the blame for eating all the world's fish and killing the whales, and so that's kind of a different topic. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, if you go to the Japanese fish market, there's plenty of fish there, and they're not cheap, that's for sure. There's There are cheaper brands, you know, the less tasty ones, but um, there's fish all over the place for sale, so, and, uh, and then there's also the fish farming aspect, too, which is problematic. It, it, they, I, I don't remember the details, but just to raise fish is, uh, causes pollution, or there's they have to use certain chemicals or whatnot. But so, are you saying, Yoichi, that you don't think the the tuna are endangered, or? Well, what I'm saying is that there has been a long term problem, but there has been also a comeback due to the fishing bans that have been imposed. So mm-hmm. this is kind of an odd mm-hmm. time to come out bemoaning the situation. Because so many countries have put bans on fishing, right? I mean, it's sort of like the, the horses are left to stable, the policies in. Uh, why is World right. Wildlife on complaint? Because of this kill off in the North Pacific. They're trying to shift the blame to a problem that used to exist 10 years, 15 years ago, mm-hmm. before the fishing bans were in place. So I think it's a tech. Oh, uh, by the way, Richard and I have had yeah. this friendly debate of late. Over yeah. the reports of iodine-131 being found as Jewish plants, if he's correct, if if Richard is correct and I'm wrong, okay, uh, he says it's from medical waste. I'm saying it's from Fukushima, you know, releases. If he's right, then the cancer rate in Japan is definitely going up. You know, so I think this is, you know, one of the things, whoever's right or wrong, it's, it's, it's very disturbing. So, Rick, why don't you explain what you think is happening there? Uh, well, right. Uh, yeah, that's a uh, complicated issue, but there's a kind of debate going on whether the Fukushima is still fissioning, and the signs of fissioning are iodine and uh, xenon. And according to TEPCO's readings, uh, Unit 1 still is emitting small amounts of xenon. So I'm not sure if that means that technically that's an admission that it's still fissioning or not. Of course, we don't know if their readings are accurate or not, you know, because there's no independent oversight of what's happening at Fukushima. So that right in itself is dubious. So all you can do is go by the telltale signs and uh, the other point of view is that if there was uh, if there was ongo- larger ongoing fissioning, then you would not only find iodine in the sewage, but in also in other places, and it's not turned up in other places so, such as the soil. But that could just be because they're not measuring it, or people aren't reporting it, or whatever. But that's an interesting theory, Yoichi, that I hadn't thought of. That if there is a lot of uh, radiation cancer treatment, that that could be ironically related to. The fact that people, especially in that area, are getting cancer, but it's a really complicated thing because you have to differentiate between the. It is true that iodine gets into the medical waste and or is used in medical treatments, and then gets into the waste. Yeah, uh, but uh, is it getting the into the waste in the quantities necessary right. to ascertain, right. you know, what you're proposing? I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah that's I, I right. I'm not. I yeah, think your agent thinks I'm dead be, wrong. I'm yeah, just playing is, the devil's advocate with him. <laughs> so we have fun doing that sometimes. Well, well, if it is, it's alarming. Yeah. If it yeah. is, it's super alarming because it means uh, Richard's latest thing. In the debate, we're learning a lot. He's seen saying people are being released early from the hospitals. They're not being stayed in the hospitals where there's a proper water treatment yeah. system. They're being sent home. And that would account for the mm-hmm. iodine passing through their bodies. And into towns, it, let's say there's two towns in Fukushima with very high readings. And there have been, just of late, in the last, uh, I think, six weeks or so, there's been a surge in the iodine reading. It would be mean that a lot of people are being examined and uh, treated for, you know, uh, internal that, cancer. That means that and, they're uh, using a huge amount organism. of radioactive byproducts and products, period, on on the general populace. And I just don't know that that's true. 
you know, to basically try to kill tumors. They they have to do this in a right. way to try to right. kill tumors. Right. I, 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 yeah. Okay? And that would mean, and that would account for this surge, but it's, it is uh, the, you know, 1,000 decros for a kilogram of slug. That's a huge amount for these relatively small towns. I mean, yeah. you know, hundreds of people uh, may be uh, diagnosed of late, you know, and then in Gunma also. There was a huge uh, reading over there. Oh, they look and what's strange is that these actually, by we can't determine whether this is a failure in just a national re- the only certain uh, plants take readings uh-huh. or what, because we don't have a complete database. That's why no. there is a debate. No. Uh, it's a it's we'll, a perfect we'll research, thing. It's a perfect. We're research this too. Yeah. All right. It's a perfect straw man to go to to blame. For this, I mean, uh, uh, oh, it's medical yeah. waste. Come on, uh, right. you know there is some of that, but if if there's that yeah. much of it showing up in random sampling, how the hell are they are they disposing well, of this stuff? If, if Fukushima is still fissioning, that's the worst PR nightmare for the Olympics. You know, people aren't going to want to come to Tokyo to go to the Olympics, knowing that the the, the Plan is still sending off fissioning uh, radiation. Well, exactly. So they and want that, to cover it up. We've been talking about that, as you know, for a long time. Uh, Yoichi's right on top of it. He's been there to Tokyo Bay. Remember the blue whale that died and floated into Tokyo Bay? I mean, come on, that's uh, yeah. that's a not a good indicator. That was two years ago, I think, something like that. Uh, Richard, thank you for being here as always. Yeah, Great to talk to you. Yeah, we'll talk to you guys again. Okay. Uh, Yochi, uh, you take care of yourself down there, and we'll talk to you next week. Okay. All right. That's uh, that's it. There's Monday for you. Tomorrow night, let's see. We're going to look at 9-11 tomorrow night with very controversial uh, Rebecca, Rebecca Roth, who was on uh, two weeks ago. Just stunning uh, with her new book. We'll talk about her first book and her brand new book as well uh, tomorrow night. Talk to you then. Take care.